All right. So uh, what we are going to do now is uh, uh, how many uh, we have an over uh, uh, operator overloading review tonight, going through all different aspects of operator overloading in, in C++, right from the beginning to the end. Um, uh, who can join at 9 o'clock? Hands up. Who can join at 10 o'clock? Okay, 9 it is. Okay, good. Okay, so we'll, we'll start at 9 o'clock. Okay, so at 9 at night, I'm going to start. It's going to be on big blue button. You know how to go through it. I'm going to mention again. So uh, you go to SAB session. You're going to go on SAB session. You click on tools, then you click on big blue button, then something, then a, a, a window is going to appear saying launch. Uh, you click on that one, and you will see this is going to appear. And it's, you're not going to see end session and kill all because you're kick all because you're not the presenter. So you're going to just see join session. Click on join session. It's going to show microphone or listen only. Please, microphone. Got a headset. They don't say that thing. Okay? Do you have a headset? If you don't have it for tonight, why are we talking about it? Have a headset. You cannot keep track of, uh, if you type it, it's nice, so it's going to be cute, that's fine. But if you just stop me so we can have a conversation on, on things, that will be even better. So keep that in mind. Uh, and go to demo.bigbluebutton.org, test it first. Demo.bigbluebutton.org, write it down for all those people who, demo.bigbluebutton.org, just Google. Demo, big blue button. The server is going to come up. You can log into it and test it and see how it works. So when you're logging over here, you're not going to say, how am I supposed to work with this? OK? Yes, sir. Uh, I will record it, but there is no guarantee it's going to work or not. OK. So I will record. I will record. No, they cannot join. You can't join, right? OK. So I will record. All right. I'll try to record it both ways. So if, if that doesn't work, I'll put it on YouTube. Any questions about what we've talked about? I'll, I'll give it a quick go when I'm going to do it. But I'm going to do it because if I didn't do it, it wouldn't get into the list. So I'm going to give it to you. I give the quizzes back, I'll explain how things happen. And I'm going to review the quizzes. Guys, you suck. You have to study, OK? <laughs> I'm telling you, you have to study. We, di we didn't have one single perfect mark. We only had one single perfect 18 out of 18. And that was because uh, that person caught me. I wrote guarantee with a Y. It's supposed to be double E. So it actually fixed it, uh, told me that I made a mistake. And I gave him, him or her one mark because I've, I had a mistake and uh, he or she fixed it. So that's, that's the only person. And that person got 17 out of 18 and then become 18 out of 18. So uh, also, you can get more than 100%. If you do something amazing, it's going to be more than 100%. Therefore, the mark's going to go up. Also, you can get negative marks, which is going to bring the whole course down. How? by not writing the complete information in your name, OK? It took me around 25 minutes to mark your quizzes. It took me around 40 minutes to enter the marks. Because of your beautiful handwriting and the fact that you didn't write all the information in there. If, you, if I can't read your email, then I'm going to type your name, OK? But if, if I can't read your name, then I'm going to go to your email. If you only write one of those, and write it in hieroglyphs, I cannot read it, OK? Please, I have awful handwriting, OK? I know that for a fact. But when I want somebody to recognize me, to give me marks, 
I'm going to make sure that person can read my name. Just like that is not going to work. Please. Please write your names in a way that a six-year-old can read it. Okay? Please. All right? Back up. Are we okay with this? Are we okay? All right. And if in any way I can't immediately recognize who you are, you lose two marks. So if you write your name, fine. If you write it in a way I can't read it, you lose two marks, which means if everything's bad, you get negative two. And if that happens, it brings the whole thing down. I want you to write your name. And one more thing I wanted to ask you. There is a nickname back there at the end. I wrote nickname, OK? Many of us, like I used to be Freddy for a long time, OK? Not far that, just some person. And people couldn't say far that, so Freddy. OK, so I was Freddy. And it's Canada, I understand. We are coming from all over the world, and we are all Canadians, and we have different names. That is sometimes difficult. That's why we choose a nickname. I love it. Please, when you are writing your name, last name, don't trust yourself. Take your student card out and look. Your first name, student card, goes your first name over there. OK? All right? and write it exactly how it's written. The reason is that it's very difficult to find names, especially when they're similar. OK, so thank you. Thank you. Let's start. Any uh, lecture-based questions? Yes, sir. OK, virtuals? OK, we're going to go through it again. So I'm going to do a quick review of what we have done last last time, and then I'm going to talk about that. All right? Any other question? All right. So let's do this. So set a startup project. This is how what we ended the uh, the last day with. Uh, so. Essentially, we created, uh, so uh, we said um, in inheritance, what we, we have in, in real life, we have inheritance. What happens? My father dies, leaves me his tools, I inherit the tools. Okay, that's one type of inheritance that we have in real life. Second type of inheritance, I have my mother's ears, but my father's eyes. So I get. That's this type of inheritance is not the one we deal with in object orientation. These are material stuff and DNA stuff and things like that. This inheritance is not the one. The inheritance we are talking about in object orientation is mimicking a design, copying a design, and cloning it into a better thing or more narrowed down thing. So getting an already existing design and modify it to something new, and that's what we call inheritance. I have a car, OK? If I told you I was just giving that example today in class to one of my friends. So I have a car. When I say I have a car, everybody knows that I have something that I sit in and has four wheels. It has a steering wheel, a gas pedal, and a brake, and that's all you know. Nothing more. But you're sure that it has those things. OK? If I told you I have a Toyota, now you mag them. Like, you can kind of guess what my car looks like, because Toyota have that ugly in front of it. It's like somebody's stretching their mouths. OK? So it's like that. So you know almost how, what my car looks like. You definitely know what the logo is in front of my car. You know those things about my car. But that's the extent of it. You know it's not. So if you see a Mercedes-Benz, you know it's not my car because I have a Toyota, right? So it narrows it down. If I told you I have a Toyota Corolla, then I am narrowing it down more. It's so essentially, still when I say I have a Toyota Corolla, you know it has four wheels. You know it has steering wheels and a gas pedal and a brake. OK? But you, you, that's. That's given because it's a car. That's inheritance. So my Toyota Corolla 
is inheriting these aspects of a car, but still you cannot materialize what I materialize what I told you. A Toyota Corolla doesn't give you enough information. If I told you I have a red Toyota Corolla, it narrows it more down. So if you see a car that is a Toyota Corolla and it's red, you say it might be part of it. But still you don't know. Did I have a four door sedan? Is it a hatchback? Is it a coupe? Nobody knows, right? If I give you more information, it keeps narrowing it down. As soon as I give you my license plate, what did I just do? I instantiated my, my car. You can actually touch that car. So you go over there, you see the car with that license plate, that's something unique, that's the object. Now you can go, okay, yeah, this is a Toyota Corolla, it's red, it, it's missing one of the side view mirrors. It, so you can get the aspects of the car exactly how it is because you see it. And that's the end of object orientation. So the, so the fact in, in this thing that I, that I had a design and I narrowed the design down or I broadened it or narrowed it down, whatever, into other designs using the same aspects of the original one, that's inheritance. Are we clear about inheritance? Number two, each class, each class is a blueprint to create objects out of, possibly. Each class is a blueprint to create an object out of, possibly. If I say a human being, can you instantiate it to something? No, you can't, because you don't have enough information. You just, all you know is that this human being, his eyes, head, ears, walks to speak, and has the capability to talk, communicate. That's all humans do. Right. Now if I say a man or a woman, now you're getting closer. Now if I say, I don't know, an Iraqi man, a Chinese woman, now you are narrowing it down again. Now you are actually saying, okay, this person talks Arabic, the other person talks Cantonese, Mandarin, whatever the languages that you can do in China. So, so you can categorize things down, right? But again, you are going through the inheritance of things and you are getting to the end until you say, oh, this is Jack. Now we know who the person is. I can actually shake the person's hand and I know it's a man and I know it's Caucasian, whatever it is, I don't know. Okay, so, so that's how it is. Now, each class as a blueprint identifies capabilities of what that object can do. When I tell you a human being, that human being can talk. We know that for a fact, correct? Then that human being can walk. We know that for a fact because that's the design of a human being class if it's implemented properly, correct? But if I told you human talk, you can't guess even what type of a language that is. And you don't know if it's going to talk like this or it's going to talk like this, depending on being a man or a woman. So the type of or what kind of language it's going to be, you cannot go to the end of it, right? So the fact that I can say human can talk, I identified a capability, something that human can do. But the fact that I create another class out of hu this human that is an Azerbaijanian man modifies that talking capability. Is that correct? Correct? That is virtuality. So if I say human talk, depending on what her mother tongue, tongue is, assuming that we are going to do it, she's going to talk in a different way with certain accent or whatever, okay? So that's what it is. Calling the behavior of the major class and see what's going to happen at the end because we don't know how that thing is implemented later is virtuality. Are we okay with that? Okay.
Apple stock, you know, it's a stock in stock. <laughs> okay. okay. Talking was a very simple thing, actually. I'm just walking or something like that. Or uh, if I say, And you don't know how the fight's going to happen, depending on what is the. No, the output, like, like something else, like that's that's the implementation of it. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, bec mm. L let me explain what it is, and then we can come to that conclusion. Okay. So I'm going to tell you the definition for now, OK? <clears throat> Whenever you create an action for a class, any type of action, all right? That action can be duplicated in the child, correct? So child and parent, when I say child, I mean the derived class. And the parent class could have identical way identical method and a different way of doing that thing, correct? All right. Because in this hierarchy, when I create a child, essentially parent is within that child. When I request that action, I cannot be sure which one is being called. If I call the child by, by its own name, the child's method will be called. If I call the child with the parent's name, then the parent's method will be called. If I make that action virtual, it guarantees that the action of the parent will always be ignored. And always the latest one is going to get called. OK, so it's just calling the one down the line, right? The last one. And the last one, that's what we call the latest version of a uh, method or a behavior, yes. So, um, example, like, uh, like, maybe like we have like three classes, like parent, child, and then a grandchild. grandchild. And then the grandchild, uh, they all have obviously the same method. So qualifying virtual, like qualifying that method by virtual on the grandchild class would... Not at grandchild, at the grandparents class. Oh, at the grandparents. So you okay. specify, when you specify something virtual at grandparents class, Everything else becomes virtual, which means if I have grandparent, parent, and child, and I create a child class, and the actions are shared throughout the hierarchy, no matter how I call the grandchild, who its parent or its grandparent, always the child action will be called. So parent, be, parent automatically becomes virtual. You don't even need to mention it. That's what we're going to do today. Mm -hmm. uh, like the middle, I guess, the child mm -hmm. would, uh, would call their function, and then the grandchild would call their function. If their it's function. not, if it, oh, if you qualify it. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, if you qualify yeah, if you qualify it and tell to the, see, if you just say, <clears throat> if you just say human call, you, human talk, mm -hmm. if you do that, then it's going to come to Fardat. Mm -hmm. Fardat speaks Persian and then speaks English. I'm going to, but my latest language is English, so I'm going to speak in English. But now you're going to tell me Persian for that, talk. Now I'm going to speak Farsi to you. You qualified, you requested for the action of my father to be, to be called. Therefore, it's going to be called. If you don't mention whom, then the newest one's going to be called. And that's the answer I wanted in your quizzes. What does a virtual function guarantee? It guarantees that the latest version of a method is called. That's all. This is your interview answer. If tomorrow you go to a place and they ask you what is virtuality, you always mention virtuality guarantees that the latest version of a behavior is always invoked. Yes.
Oh, you want to make everything virtual just in case? It depends on your design. If you, you create a class. You look at the actions that you are doing. You are the author of the, of the class. If you have a system analyst and you are just a the developer, they're going to tell you, don't worry. But if you are the analyst, you are the person who is designing the system, then when you create your parent class, you look, OK, this behavior may be modified. I've got to make it virtual. This behavior, I do not want to be modified. I do not want the latest version to be called. I always want the parents to be called if the parent is referred to. You don't make it virtual. Depending on if you want the latest version to be called or not, then you make it virtual. It's not that I should just do it in case. You look at it when you are in that level of knowledge that you are actually designing an object-oriented based class, then you'll know. OK? If the parent is virtual, it goes. Thank you. That's a good thing. Sure. There's no way to qualify. There is no way. All right. All right. Put it as far away from you so we don't have. <laughs> OK. <clears throat> All right. Uh, yes. You just said constructor, right? Constructors have nothing to do with virtuality, only methods. Constructor is not a function, so you cannot make it virtual. Oh, so it's not related to what I was talking about? Oh. Oh, OK, go ahead. The hero. Oh, that's the thing. Um, so the question was. The question was, uh, Hero had a constructor with three arguments, but Superhero had with five, OK? So when I create a Superhero, does the code for Hero run in a background? Yeah. The answer is that I would say your question is wrong. When you create a Superhero, you have a Hero. It's not that it's like. When you create a second story building, second story of a building, the first story is there. You cannot not have it. When you create a child class, parent comes, parent is part of it. Don't put your, put your humanity away. It's the design you're inheriting. Don't think, OK, I inherited from my father. My father is not here now. It's not like that. It's not. An object does not inherit from object. It's the design that you're improving. When you create a superhero, it is a hero. When you instantiate a hero, OK, you better have a way to inst When you instantiate a superhero, you better tell the compiler how to initialize the hero object. How you do it? By invoking the, the three argument constructor in the five argument constructor in the initialization area. And telling to superhero, this is, a, this is how a hero is. Or you set the hero to default values or set it empty or whatever. Yes? Yes. OK, let, let, guys, uh, uh, let's de delay the questions and have the microphone for, for, for the sake of the thing when you're, and hold it in your hand like you're singing. OK, go ahead. Um, so yeah, I noticed that the destructor for the animal class has a virtual keyword in front of it. Does that, I mean, if animal had a child class, what does that entail for the both destructors? OK, the reason is, the reason is that destructors 
should be virtual. It's not that can be virtual. Another question in your quiz. I actually told you how uh, the structure should be written. And I expect that you put a virtual in front of it because I told you from now on till the day you die, you have to put virtual in front of the destructor. Remember that? All right? The reason that you have to do that is that because of dynamic, dynamic memory allocation, you are capable of creating an object in the parent's reference. I can create a cat in an animal pointer, correct? If I do something like that, when you delete that animal, then only the animal part is going to get removed. Guarantee that the latest version of the destructor is called, which means the child, therefore everything dies, you have to make sure that always your destructors are virtual. All right? Okay. Yes, sir. The other way. It deletes the child and parent. It's always. Okay. So when you have virtual everything, all the destructors in reverse order will be called. Another quiz for the question for the next quiz. So when you have inheritance uh, and the destructor is virtual, what is the order that the destructors are called in the hierarchy of inheritance? It's always first child, then parent, then grandparent in reverse order, always. OK? Are we OK with this? Pardon me? Without virtual? No, if, it's, uh, if, if you have a child in the parent's pointer, then it won't. What if you don't have If you don't, if, if you only have one class, okay? Again, <clears throat> I mentioned this and I'm going to mention it again, okay? And I want you to listen carefully. The virtual keyword. The virtuality means activation. The virtual keyword doesn't do anything. It doesn't come into action unless you have a child referred to by a parent's pointer or reference. So when you talk about virtual, you have to know that the only time virtuals actually come to play is when you have a child pointed or referred to by a parent's pointer. Otherwise, virtuals don't mean anything. Of course, when you create a child and you destroy a child, a child will go away and all that it's in it. The only time virtuality come to play, actually you need to think about it. So if you have a walkthrough, you see I have five levels of inheritance. I created a child just normally, and I deleted that child just normally, and there are lots of virtuals over there. Just ignore them all. Virtuality only gets activated and comes, the come to, comes to play if you have a child pointed or referred to by a parent. Otherwise don't need to even worry about it. Are we okay with this? All right. Very good questions, actually. I'm very happy. So I don't need to do the review because it's all done. That, that, review, that was everything that we've done. Okay, so, <coughs> so as we recall, uh, we have an animal, and the animal has name. It has lots of stuff that is not taking part in any type of uh, inheritance. We made... Uh, three functions to play with it to, to see how virtuality works and inheritance and everything. So uh, actually these are getting inherited, but they are not modified by the child, the, by, by the children of animal. So the only three methods that we are getting them involved in inheritance are act, move, and sound, and by no choice, the destructor. So destructor, act, move, and and sound is the one that we use this in, is, is the, in this example. Out of an animal, we created a cat. <clears throat> and we said cat publicly inherits animal. Essentially, how you read that, you're going to say cat is an animal that these things come through. Always. 
So you read that like that. So remember, is a, is a, is one of the signs of inheritance. Okay? Is a is one of the signs of inheritance. So whenever you see an statement that says a Honda Civic is a car, it means you have an inheritance. But when I say Honda Civic has an engine, that's not inheritance anymore. Honda Civic has an object inside as a property that is of a class type engine. That's how it's different. A human being has, an, has a head, hopefully, okay? <laughs> or has a brain, hopefully, okay? It doesn't mean that I'm a brain. I have one, okay? A human being has eyes, which means I have two eyes, or hopefully two eyes, yeah. So that's what it is. So has a means I have things. Now, of course, I is a complicated class. When you look at it, it has lots of properties and things, and you can, like when you look at the class I, it actually has its own properties and everything. But I have that one, it means it's not me. But when I say, Fardad is a mammal, it means I am talking about the category of creatures, and we are talking about live things, and we are talking about mammals and then be through that category. So is a, is inheritance, has a, means. So a cat has number of lives, but is an animal. Are we OK? Whenever we said you modify, whenever you have the exact same type of action in the child as you have in the parent, then those actions, then those actions overwrite the actions of the parent. Okay? Overwrite the actions of the parent, which means when you instantiate a cat and you tell the cat to do something, always the actions that overwrites will be called. Now, if one of the actions are missing, if, for example, this cat of mine does not have the action move, no problem. I can still tell the cat to move. Why? Because the parent knows how to do it. Therefore, the action of parent will be called. So remember that. All the other stuff that we did not implement is empty, set empty, name, casting the Boolean thingy, operator equal, all the things that we have set up for an animal, a cat has it. A cat has is empty. The cat has set name. The cat has set name, uh, the name and getter for the name. It has all those things. I do not need to modify them. It can actually call it. But if you actually create the exact same method inside cat, that always uh, will shadow. Uh, Override the calls of the parent, unless yes. Um, how about if we use the keyword "this"? Would that wouldn't that make virtual? No, this kind of means this, this object, and that's it. It doesn't call any virtual because it doesn't call anything. So, like for example, if we have an object, a cat object, and we want to call the sound uh, action on the cat, you have to then you have to say animal scope resolution sound. But what if we w just wanted to call the cat version of that? Then you say this, or yeah. just just say just call the methods right beside you. Why use this? Uh, if you want to type extra stuff, sure, be my guest. <laughs> but I mean, uh, my my question, I guess, is uh, wouldn't that make virtual pointless or no? Useless? Not at all. I told you, t virtuals are only in use when you have a parent mm -hmm. referring to a child. Okay. If I can, I, I tell you, can I have the microphone? You're gonna give me the microphone. Can I say, can I have this microphone? I just wasted uh, an extra word that I needed to use because it's here. That's all. Okay? It's the same thing over there. So you don't, the word this refers to this object. It's that address of this object. If you're in a cat, it means the cat. If you're in the animal, it means the animal. That's it. No other thing. It doesn't do anything with virtuality or anything like that. Are we okay? 
Oi, 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 oi. Yes, sir. Oh, okay, so here we should also write the virtual void move constant here. No, no, this one? Yeah. I, I did it specifically to tell you what it, what's going to happen if it's not virtual. No, we didn't. We shouldn't. As my friend asked over there, it depends on our design. We shouldn't always make things virtual. We have to see if it's needed to be virtual. Uh -huh. I cannot tell you when we need it now because we don't, have, we don't know enough object orientation. Take the systems course, then you're going to know. So if we have three classes, use the same name function. They all become virtual if the first one is virtual. So virtual, virtual. Virtual. You don't need to write. So this act that you see over here at line 10 of cat, uh, that's virtual too. Oh, uh, OK. Do you right. do not write the virtual twice? No. You, as wherever virtual is written, yeah. from there forward, everything becomes virtual. So if I make move virtual here, uh. then after cat, everything becomes virtual, not before. So in a hierarchy of inheritance, if you have virtual halfway through, everything after becomes virtual, not before. Uh, uh. All right? Yes, sir. Um, so in what cases would you want to uh, call some child's method by parent's pointer or reference? Whenever you want to serialize things, I'll explain to you later. Let's say I have... 20 different animals, birds, cats, and all the things, okay? And I want to feed them all. You have to feed the fish in a different way. You have to fish, feed the lion in a different way. You have to feed. So feeding animals are different methods, correct? And a robot is doing it. If I want to feed them all, how do I tell to the robot to feed all these? I create a, an array of pointer of animals and make each pointer to point to different animal. And I'm going to say, feed these animals. It's going to say, first animal, feed. Because the latest version of feed is going to get called, because that's the lion, a lion is going to get fed. Then it's going to say, fish, feed. Because the latest version of a feed is to throw pallets in the pool, it's going to throw the pallets in the pool. Then it's going to go, chicken, feed. Then it's going to put the corn in front of So depending on what is the latest version of that action, that action will be called so we can serialize things. The array will be uh, array of pointers. Yes. It becomes the array of pointer of parent of all those objects. And therefore, you can refer to all those objects. I'm going to say, students, listen to me. Now, each student is going to listen in its own way. Write, and I'm going to say, students, write. And you're going to write your name over there, and poor me is supposed to sit over there and find out what's your handwriting, because each one of you is going to write with its own method type of handwriting. Are we OK with that? Next question. I was just wondering why shadowing skips some of the functions, like shadow. Because of the exact same thing that I mentioned. When you have the, another version created, then the old version is going to be ignored. Right? Oi, 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 oi. Yes, sir. I'm not really asking a question. I just want to explain. If you tell me explain what virtual is, I'm going to no, beat no, you no, up. No, 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 no. <laughs> I'm just going to try to explain it in my own way. Okay. I just have to say if that's true. Okay. So, OK, I can make like a function, sorry, like a method, like um, you jump, right, in um, main. Mm -hmm. right, in, uh, the uh, main file and then the child file I can make another main, so main right? Tell parent class. So your parent class, right? So and in animal you create a method called jump. Exactly, and, <laughs> the, and the child class I created the same method called jump, right? Mm -hmm. So if I do virtual, it basically means that when uh, when the child one calls it, it's only going to call that one because it's the latest one. Exactly. So okay. Exactly. So essentially you're, so you're going to say cat jump, it's bird jump. I don't know if birds jump, but or rabbit jump, it's going to be a different type of jump. Um, I had a question uh, about the destructor again. So if we qualify the parent class with a virtual keyword, does that apply to the child uh, classes? Always. Uh, destructors? Always. Always. So any place in hierarchy that you add virtual to the destructor, all the destructors after that will become virtual. Can I go to the new topic, or we still have questions? We do have questions. <laughs> 
that means that for the second one you don't have to put virtual? No, you don't need to. You don't need, it, it is virtual automatically. It, so anything, so, so I'll explain. I have it over there. If, when I get to it, I'll explain. Any other question? It's good. That's how, it's, that's how a class is supposed to be, for heaven's sake. Don't laugh. It's, it's good. This is how a class is supposed to be. Okay? If everybody's silent and nobody's asking a question, two possibilities. Everybody knows what's going on, and they're here for no reason, which is highly unlikely. Nobody knows what's going on, which is the most likely thing that happened. So please ask questions. I'm happy to hear it. Anyway, so <clears throat> that's, what, that's how we created those things. So we have uh, action and move and sound. And we had action and move and sound in cat. Uh, move wasn't virtual. So we, what we did in the cat tester program, we started calling uh, uh, the act and move of, uh, of uh, uh, the cat in different ways. So we created a cat. And then uh, we made uh, pointers to that cat. And then we called that cat using the pointer and the reference. And we saw that different. Uh, uh, the, the ones that are being referred with the parent's pointer uh, um, only call the children's if they are virtual. Otherwise, the parent's going to get called. So essentially, let me just take all these things out. And I'm just going to take this out. Actually, let me actually create a new tester. That's better. So uh, wow, I have many testers. <laughs> let me see what are those. Give me two seconds. Yeah, that's the simple one that I was talking about. All right. So now I'm going to call tester 2, and I'm going to go through it. No. So I'm going to add over here, remove this one, and add tester 2. So this is another example of, <clears throat> of how these things affect, uh, how these will be uh, will be affecting the uh, 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 virtuality. Now, in, in this program, I created a cat, C, and I call it Tom. OK? Then I create an animal. Is back there, can you see it, or you want me to make it bigger? Everybody can see this? OK. So in line 12, in a pointer of an animal, I'm creating a new cat called Fluffy. So Fluffy has no handle other than an animal handle. Fluffy, although it's a cat, but it's created in an animal handle. I have no way to access Fluffy other than the animal handle. And because of that fact, if I did not make the vir constructor virtual, when I deleted Fluffy at line 18, only the animal would have died. And the cat part would remain in rem memory, therefore memory leak would happen. All right? And another example of using virtuals is functions. I have <clears throat> a function that is supposed to call the act of, a, of an animal. So I'm saying void act animal reference A. So A will call the act and then move of an animal. So when I pass the cat, as you see, to the act function. Let's see what happens. <clears throat> so I'm going to go step by step and just walk through it to see what happens. <clears throat> it's a beautiful walkthrough. Just assume that this walkthrough is for final exam and you're doing it. OK? So let's point over here. Having the knowledge, we're just going to guess what's going to happen. So. <clears throat> uh, the cat gets created, of course. The animal gets created. Another cat. So Tom is created. Fluffy is created. I have no access to Fluffy other than an animal pointer. So when I say animal, uh, when I say, so looking at, looking at animals, uh, looking at animals specification, we know that act and sound are virtual, but move is not. Knowing that, 
let's guess what happens. <clears throat> I am saying animal, act. Act was? Act is what? Virtual. Because it's virtual, the latest version will be called, so it's going to act playfully like a cat. Then I'm going to say act. Then I'm going to say move. Move is not virtual. Because it's not virtual, the closest thing to that pointer will be called. The closest move to an animal is animal's move. Therefore, that one's going to get called. So move like Fluffy the animal, not the cat. And when I say sound like one because it is virtual, it's going to sound like Fluffy the animal and it's going to act like it. Now, <clears throat> and when I, when I actually delete that animal, when I delete that animal, because the destructor is virtual, the cat will die and the animal part is removed too. If I did not have the, <clears throat> the destructor as virtual, then only the animal will be removed, would have been removed. Go at home, remove the virtual, run it, and test it. That's how you learn. Okay? <clears throat> yes, sir. Um, why was it sound? It did fluffy the animal instead of fluffy the cat. Yeah. Uh, the sound, yeah. It said oh. meow. Oh. Okay. Why did yeah. it do that? Because that's a beautiful question. Why did it act, why did it says like sound like fluffy the animal? Because I qualified, I wanted, if you look at the code of the animal, you will see that, uh, of the cat, you will see that I specifically, in sound of cat, am calling the sound of animal too. So it not only does meow, but also does that. Are we okay? Are we okay? All right. <clears throat> And what I wanted to talk about, the last one, was this. C, Tom, is, an, is a cat. C is a cat created in the reference of a cat. Therefore, virtuality is not in play. You don't even need to look at virtual. But when I am passing that cat to the act function, what is the reference of the act function over here? It's an animal reference, right? So essentially, it's receiving a cat in an animal reference. This is the time that virtuality comes, virtuality comes to play. Now, A over there is actually referring to the cat. So when I actually say over here, act, it's going to act playfully like a cat. But when I say move, then it's going to move like an animal because the reference is an animal pointing at a cat. Are we okay with this? Are we okay? One? Are we okay? Two? Yes, sir. Can you just explain that one more time? Okay. <clears throat> In here, the object that I created at line 11 is a child created in a reference of a child. Therefore, in a scope of main, whatever I do to see, I don't need to look at virtuals. Because it's a cat in a reference of a cat and I don't care. But as soon as I pass that cat to the function act, which is receiving the cat in a reference of an animal, my trigger comes to the point. Now I have an animal, uh, I have a cat pointing with an animal. Now I have to put my microscope and take a look at those virtuals because now it's the time that virtuality comes to play. Are we okay? All right. And that's the last thing we talked about last time. Now, oh, is it halfway through my running? Uh, uh, there we go. We talked about human can walk or human can talk, right? We said that if we refer to a human and we say talk, depending on what that talking is, 
in future designs, human is going to talk in a different way, correct? We said that, right? Can you instantiate a human? If, if you were Michelangelo, and you knew how to create a sculpture pretty good, if I told you create a sculpture of a human being, could you really do it? Because it's not specific, correct? Because there are behaviors in there, things in there, that are yet not defined, correct? But we know they are there. How come? I know a human can talk. The talking is known to me. But how it's done is not there. Can you appreciate that? Can you appreciate what I... If I told you a car can move, now if the car is a Hummer, and I say move, and if the car is a Tesla, and I say move, depending on one is being gasoline driven and the other one being electric, the mode of movement is completely different scenario, correct? Because of that, I cannot tell to the car move without actually further implementation of the action move, correct? These type of actions that are known to be there, but yet not known how, are called pure virtual actions. Actions that we know they should exist. But we don't know how. So, how do I implement that in C++? It's the simplest syntax you can see. All you need to do is say, an animal should be able to act. I don't know how, though. Equal to zero. So if you create a virtual function, and only virtuals can be equal to zero. So if you create a virtual method and put equal zero in the prototype, then in the animal itself, you do not implement it anymore. There is no act in here. You don't need to implement it because you don't know how yet. You know all animals should act in some way. But how? I have no idea. Which means you put the burden of implementation on a shoulder of a person who is refining your design by inheriting it into a new class. Are we okay with this? Now, as I told you, a human you cannot create a sculpture of because it has lots of unknown. In reality, only one unknown act is enough to make that design only an idea and not a blueprint of reality. My animal cannot be instantiated anymore because I left one unknown thing in there. It's an incomplete design. Therefore, it cannot get instantiated. Now, if I go to my main in here, in the cat tester, if I actually say create an animal, it will cause an error, error because it's an abstract base class. An abstract base class is a class that at least has one pure virtual method in it. Okay? One your virtual method is enough to make a, a base class abstract, which means if I compile this code and try running it, what happens over here, it's going to tell me, it's going to tell me, it's going to tell me, cannot instantiate abstract base class. Where? Right where I'm creating that animal. You can create pointers of them. So if I remove this, 
I am very fine by having a reference of animal pointing to a cat. I am very, uh, sorry, referring to a cat. I am perfectly okay by having a pointer of an animal pointing to a cat. I can do that. I can still say animal, act, animal, move, animal, make a sound. Because cat is an animal. But animal by itself cannot exist. Are we okay with that? Are we okay one? Are we okay two? Yes. Sarah, could you please pass this to my friend over there? Take it, take it. It's not gonna bite you. Right. Okay. Um, so does that mean that we should always use virtual for case tracking? No, it has nothing to do with that. I mean, I, I'm not talking about it. I'm saying if you have a virtual uh -huh. and you don't know how to implement that yet, if you have an action in the base class that you do not know how to implement it yet, what you need to do is to make it a pure virtual. Like this, you are forcing anyone who creates an animal to create an act for their thing. Otherwise, their class becomes abstract too. If I say human talk, that's fine, right? Then I inherit human to a male and a female. So I have a male human, I have a female human, correct? Although I inherited different types of behaviors to female and male, I added different types of behavior to female and male out of a human, but still I did not implement the, t implement the talking. Because I didn't implement the talking, male and female are still ideas. You cannot implement them because they have pure virtual methods in them still from the parent. So anytime you have a method that is not final, you don't know how to deal with it, you set it to pure virtual, and that makes the class abstract. So if I run this program, it works perfectly without instantiating an animal, and everything works the way it's, it's supposed to. So if I come over here and go run by one, so I create the, the, the animal. As you see, nothing is created over here other than reference and a pointer to, a, to, a, to an animal that is pointing to a cat. So if I tell to the cat to act, move, and sound, no virtuality in play. I have a cat working with a cat. But if I come down over here and I say animal act, because animal doesn't know how to act at all, definitely the act of the, the, the cat will be called. And move, it wasn't virtual, so the move of the animal would be called, and sound uh, is implemented so in the, in, the, in the child, so and it's virtual, so exactly the same thing, no difference. So again, act, move, and sound, exactly the same. And this is where we talked about serializing these things. So as you see now, I created an animal pointer P. It's not perfect example over here, but if I had different types of animal, I'm going to bring it the next time that you're going to have bird and the fish, and I'm going to put all the animal kingdom, and then you'll see what happens after I go through these. But for now, I have a three pointers of animal, and three cats are in there. And when I simply say animals act and move one by one, it's going to act. So as you see, uh, Jack, Joe, and Jill are created, and each one of them, when they act, they act they were supposed to exactly how they are supposed to. And when I delete them all, they all die properly because the, the structure is virtual, and that's pure virtual methods. Are we okay down to here? Not at all. Two different things. Do not even... No, 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 no. Delete is prevention. Delete is restriction. It has nothing to do. Delete, it means do not. When you say equal to zero, it means I didn't know. Please do. And delete is set. When you do delete, it means nobody is allowed to copy. Nobody is allowed to assign. You are preventing it. When you say equal to zero, it means I don't know. The next person must do it. So it's the exact opposite. You are forcing the other people to do it. Otherwise, they don't have anything.
All right. Sometimes, sometimes all you have is an idea. Sometimes, and this is the last thing before the break. I know everyone's falling asleep, but I want to make the connection and then you can go. <laughs> okay? Sometimes all you have is an idea, and you have no implementation for anything. Take a look at this. That's my animal. My animal is an idea of a thing that can act, move, and make a sound. And that's all I want an animal to do. That makes anything that can act, move, and make a sound, my view is an animal. OK? If that's the case, that class will be called, and is called an interface. In C++, there is no specific thing for it. It's just an object-oriented terminology. So remember, when you hear interface, it means a class that is all pure virtual. It's just an idea. An interface doesn't have a CPP file because there is nothing to implement. You follow? And remember, remember, it is very important to know that Interfaces are created specifically for handling a category of things. They are created to categorize things so they can be handled properly. Now, if I say animal, now out of an animal, I can create a class that I call pet. So I'm going to say a pet is essentially an animal that can do these things. OK? Now, the good thing was to actually remove the act from the animal. I'll do it for next semester. So you can fail the course and come. So it's a good, it would be nice to have the animal just with move and sound and say a pet is an animal that can act in a certain way too. But I didn't do it. But anyways, so as you see now, my pet in here is an animal that can move and make a sound, but I still don't know how it acts. Which means my pet is also an abstract this class, but it is not an interface because it did not implement the act that it has to do. OK? But then I inherit the pet into a cat. Now I have something to talk about. Now I'm going to say a cat is a pet that has a number of lives, and it can act and move and make a sound, and so on and so forth. We call this class a final class, a class that is finalized. It has everything implemented. You can actually instantiate it to something. A pet, you cannot instantiate. An animal, it's all virtual, OK? But uh, a cat? is a final class. It has everything in it. I didn't do anything extra in here. So pet in here was exactly what the animal was before. I didn't do anything extraordinary in here. All I did, I, mo I renamed all the animals to a pet. Then I created a new animal with everything virtual. So now if I want to create a wild animal, then I have other choices to go through and create an animal that is wild and it's not a pet. Okay, so you will see it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna create the whole thing just for you to see. Okay, uh, how it's going to be done. Are we okay down to here? Are we okay? One. So we, so we can change uh, in the head of from the beginning. Oh, so professor, uh, so the sequence. We can change what. Professor, really? Barda. Okay, go. Barda. Okay. Okay. Uh, so.
the sequence should be animal dot h include pet. Animal dot h doesn't include pet. Pet includes animal. Pet includes animal. Yes, pet is child of animal. It needs its definition. We have animal. The child of animal is pet. The child of pet is cat. Uh, so can you click the pet dot h? I can click it. Very fine. Pet includes animal, uh, cat includes pet. So, so, okay. This is not, this is, uh, this visual studio is not uh, the professional version, is the, uh, what, what is that thing called that is free? Uh, just for the tu tutoring. No, no, no. There's something, I don't, um. no, 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 come on. not going to be able to remember it. I'll remember after the break. Okay. This is the lowest, lower version. It's not professional. Because of this, it, it does not create the class diagram. I'm going to remove it and install the professional one. So you can actually say, create the class diagram. You don't need it. It's just one now. But when I have it, it actually shows animal and all the things. You can actually see the whole hierarchy of inheritance. We'll, we'll, we'll do it later. Okay? okay? If no questions. It's going to be break time, and I'm going to give you the, the quizzes back. We're good? Okay. Pause recording.